Hi and welcome to Best in Tesla News Episode 44. The Nikola Badger is dead. And Jim Chanos is cutting his short position on Tesla. New Zealand's government is going all in on EVs. And Tesla Model 3 is still dominating the EV market. And we get to see an example of Tesla's semi-trucks acceleration. And Waymo is building a fake city. That's a different approach. <laughs> to say the least. <clears throat> All this. <laughs> All this and much more to come on today's episode. Let's dive right in. Let's put our living stereo stylus in this groove. Another great week for Tesla and the Tesla stock is ending off on a new high. Tesla stock continues to go up and ending the week off with $599. Was even over $600 at some point and I think we can expect to see the $600 after close next week. According to a fund manager, Good Soiled Investment, Tesla shares could hit $800 with the inclusion into S&P 500 and said the company is the type of investment opportunity that has unique condition that most people don't see yet. Yep. It's just going to be so exciting to follow the stock price the next 14 days before S&P 500 inclusion. And Tesla and their stock is doing so well that many short sellers of course have to cut their position on Tesla. And one of them being our friend Jim Chanos himself, cutting his short position on Tesla. Jim Chanos is not as confident as he used to be that shorting Tesla is a good idea. Chanos said that he cut the price of his short position on Tesla after a painful year. <laughs> yeah, to say the least. Short sellers has lost $35 billion in 2020. Yeah, that would be painful. Owie! He told Bloomberg that he had never met Tesla's CEO Elon Musk or spoken to him. No wonder Jim Chanos don't know anything about the company then. Just take a look at investors like Ron Barron or Kathy Wood from ARK Invest that have both made millions on Tesla stock and they have both been out there talking with Elon Musk, seeing the factory and so on. That is how you actually do research, Jimmy boy. No wonder you have lost millions on your very poorly researched short positions. ARK does very good research and has tripled its assets under management this year and have three of the best performing ETFs. So maybe you could learn a bit from Kathy here, Jimmy. Anyway, when Jim was asked what he would tell Elon Musk if he did meet him, he said, I'll say, job well done so far. In 2020, short sellers suffered colossal losses on Tesla, $35 billion, which is gradually forcing them to cut their short position. While short sellers doesn't directly admit they were wrong about Tesla, the facts speak for themselves. Yes, Tesla is up 700% in the last year. Yeah, I guess that deserves a job well done. But of course Jim Chanos still don't get it, he's still short first of all, and he still screams Tesla is just a car company. Despite what everyone says, they're still an automobile company. Um, they make cars. And so they're competing with other companies that make cars. And increasingly those other companies have EVs as well. For some holders, it's an EV company. For other holders, it's a, it's a clean energy company. For other holders, it's an autonomous vehicle company. And, and it's whatever people want to believe. Yeah, Tesla is all those companies, not just one. But you will see this more clearly next year, Jimmy. But it is not only Jim Chanos that is changing his position. Goldman Sachs is making quite the U-turn. 
Yes, Goldman Sachs has done quite the U-turn. Their analysts upgraded Tesla to a buy, hiked their price target by almost $300 and now have the biggest price target on Tesla, $780 to be exact of anyone on Wall Street. This is the same firm that downgraded Tesla to a neutral in June and the share have nearly tripled since then. That is not job well done. Goldman Sachs are changing their views on Tesla even though they are a little late to the party. But their target for Tesla and the EV market is a bit conservative. They only have Tesla producing 1 million EVs in 2022. I would say they are going to have that next year. And they only have EV market share being 18% in 2030. Yeah, this is just madness. This is going to be very embarrassing in 2030 to be this wrong or even in 2025 when we probably go past 18% market share at that point. But they are changing and better late than never, but they have to change their target many times over. And Tesla's design chief has been talking to the Chinese media about upcoming cars. Tesla's chief of design, Franz von Holzhausen, what an awesome name by the way, recently talked with selective members of the Chinese media showcasing several key insights from the esteemed executive. For Tesla von Holzhausen stated that the company looked at the best design plan for each vehicle individually, so that every EV could be developed around its maximum potential. Just look at the Cybertruck, it does not look like anything else, just been designed for maximum potential. So Tesla will design a car special for the European markets, as Elon also talked about, a smaller hatchback would probably be a good car for the EV market in Europe. And we have to wait and see what would be the perfect car for the Chinese market. And for Tesla, it is also very important that they do some original design because that is what the best people in the industry want to do. And as we have talked about before, the most important thing for Tesla is to get the best and brightest people to come work for them. So it is just one more thing they do, pretty much just to make sure they get the best person working for them. Can't wait to see the new cars and what they're going to look like and what kind of price tag they will come with. And Norway continues the strong sales of EVs. In November, Norway once again had the EV market share of 80%. The ICE cars are truly disappearing in Norway. A little glimpse into the future the rest of us will have in the not so distant future. The ID3 is the best selling in November with 986. No surprise there, it is the newest released model. And Tesla Model 3 just made the top 10 with sales of 267, despite the car coming from China only arrived late November. So, going to be exciting to see the sales number for December in Norway. And Tesla continues the success story in Germany in November. Steady growth of Tesla's Germany sales has led the company to be the only one in Germany automotive market to see positive growth in 2020. Compared to the same period in 2019, Tesla managed to record a 37.2 increase year over year. And that is actually up from the 23.3 in October. So Tesla just continued its great trend in Germany, getting bigger and bigger and everyone getting smaller and smaller. And we can also see the plug-in market is now over 20% of the market share in Germany. Very impressive, but of course not as good as Norway, but no one really is. And a new study finds that Tesla owners in Germany are actually more likely to recommend buying a Tesla than any other product. That says a lot. And once again, just shows you how great the car are from people who are actually driving the car, not just the haters that are screaming, it is a badly built car. If it were, I don't think owners would recommend their car to their friends. Just saying. And in total, EVs are doing very well in Europe. Here is a chart of deliveries of plug-in vehicles from January to October. And as we can see, BEV, fully electric vehicles, are starting to dominate the top of the list. Renault Zoe is still on the number one spot, going to be exciting to see if they can hold on to that number one spot for the rest of the year, or if Tesla's big last quarter can make the Tesla Model 3 past a little electric car. 
also going to be interesting to see how high the Volkswagen's ID3 is going to climb on this list, because they have not been out long, but are already in the middle of the top 20 and are doing very well. So it will definitely climb higher and get into the top 10. And the ID3 only started deliveries on the 11th of September. So very impressive. And in 2021, we will also get the ID4 and the Ford Mustang Mark E and the Made in Germany Model Y entering the market. All of them being in the very popular SUV and crossover segment. So have no doubt that the trend of electric car getting more and more popular continues in Europe. And Skoda is also starting production of its Enyaq. Yak. <laughs> which is kind of a little brother to the ID4 and yet another SUV entering the market. And we also see the new Opel Mokka E that will come out next year is also already sold out before its launch. Yes, exactly. Just like I made a whole video about the demand for EVs right now are endless. Make a good EV and it will be sold out. Hopefully all automakers will soon get it. But if we are looking at the EV on the global scale, there is still only the Tesla Model 3 and all the rest. Because the Tesla Model 3 is the most popular electric vehicle in the world by a long shot. To put it in perspective, you would have to combine the next five cars in the top 10 to come even close. And those cars still haven't sold as many as the Model 3 has this year. And the top five actually includes the Tesla Model Y. Combined the second place Renault Zoe, the third place Hyundai Kona, the fourth place Nissan Leaf, the fifth place Volkswagen e-Golf that is not made anymore, and the sixth place the Tesla Model Y would bring the sales to over 174,000. This is still over 21,000 cars less than the Tesla Model 3. And there are still people that believe that Tesla is not doing well and they are doomed and there is no demand and so on. Yeah, some people are just blind. And Volvo is coming out with an electric semi-truck. And that's good, but it really just showcases how far ahead Tesla is in this game. Because it will only come with a 264 kilowatt hour battery and therefore don't have more than 150 miles of range. And can charge up to 80% of those 150 miles in 70 minutes. It does pale a bit compared to the Tesla semi-truck that would have around 600 100 miles of range and can charge 400 miles in just 30 minutes. I think it really showcases how far ahead Tesla is. Making a little compact car is one thing, but making a heavy duty semi truck is a totally different ball game. And Tesla is just dominating even more on specs here than in the electric car market. So going to be exciting to see what kind of price the Volvo would come with because they won't announce that before the launch, that is going to be next year. But will this be cheaper than the 300 mile range Tesla semi truck that start at $150,000? Because it kind of have to, or why would anyone buy the Volvo over the Tesla semi? And when you see the inside of the Volvo truck, it still looks like the old trucks. Same design, where with the Tesla, you will get this clean design with just two big screens. And of course, it will be able to make over the air update and have full self driving hardware. So, Volvo really has to come with a very good price for this truck to be attractive. But still, nice to see more automakers trying to make more electric trucks. That is, at the end, a win for us all. And everyone's Tesla Björn from Norway made a comparison video about the old Model 3 and the new Model 3 with the heat pump. And it showed that the new Model 3 is about three times more efficient in cold weather, so definitely a great improvement to the car. But not something where you have to go out and buy a totally new Model 3 if you still have the old one. Björn did give a great example of driving 200 kilometers, where the old one would use about 3 kilowatt hours more than the new one. And if you go to a charging station, let's say a 120 kilowatt charger, it would only take about one and a half minute more to charge. So not the biggest deal, but definitely a great improvement to the Model 3. I will leave a link to Björn's full video down below. And Elon made another great interview in Germany. 
And Elon did another great interview in Germany with Matthias Döfner, CEO of Alex Springer, as a part of the ceremony honoring Elon Musk, who won their Alex Springer Award. And we got some great stuff from the interview, nothing groundbreaking, but Elon is confident that SpaceX will have a manned mission to Mars by 2026, if lucky 2024, and cargo mission in 2022. He is again confirming that he believes that Tesla will have solved the full self-driving by next year. He also thought that 2030 he still think almost all cars being produced will have full self-driving and that 70 to 80 percent or more of the car being produced will be electric. So a little higher than Goldman Sachs 18 percent in 2030. And Elon did also say that their cars are about to transition to 5G, so that's pretty cool. And that he did expect the car plant in Berlin to produce about 500,000 cars already in 2022. And he did say that if some other car company wanted to merge with Tesla, they would definitely have the conversation. But I can't really see this happening, because what does the other OEMs have to offer Tesla? Anyway, this was just a small piece of the topics of the interview. You should definitely go check it all out. I will leave a link to the whole interview down below. You should definitely check it out. Also, just to see the intro of the show in this little room that took the audience on a little flight and they made a whole little video honoring Elon Musk. All very cool and very well made. And Elon Musk is no ordinary CEO, because if he was, he would of course have stayed in a fancy five-star hotel in Berlin. But nope, he just slept in the conference room at the not finished factory because it would give him a good feeling of how things were going. <laughs> yeah, that's my kind of CEO. And let's get our weekly dose of Giga Factory 5. Today I will show some videos from not Jeff Roberts for a change, but from Joe Techmeyer, who is also out there making great videos about the Giga Factory 5. Yes, the great team of Giga Factory 5, Jeff and Joe. <laughs> and Joe has just made a great video really explaining what is going on on the site. And I can highly recommend that video if you want to take a deeper dive into what is going on. I will leave a link to his video in the description below. But just with this little quick look of the site, you can easily see how fast everything is coming up. Just amazing progress. And hey, I just found another video showing how far Nikola is on their construction site. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of Nikola, GM has cancelled the previous announced deal with Nikola. Yeah, we will, as expected, never see the CGI pickup truck in reality. The Nikola Badger is dead. Let's hope we will see GM's CGI Hummer in reality at some point. But Giga Texas is real and seems to be supercharging the housing market in and around Austin. Local media report that Tesla employees have already started searching for homes in the area. Yes, this is going to be a huge deal for Austin to have Tesla Terra Factory next door. And let's just take a look at Giga Factory Berlin as well. Because thanks to Gigafactory 4 Tesla that tweeted these pictures of the ground floor being led inside the body in white building. Very cool. And Tesla also received permission to further clear industrial woodlands in the planned area in Grunheide. Yes, Tesla does not take a single break. New Zealand government goes all in on EVs. During a December the 1st House meeting, Prime Minister Eden stated that the government entities would be purchasing EVs exclusively moving forward as she declared a climate emergency. A push toward a fully electric lineup of government cars will launch forward an attempt to make New Zealand's entire public sector carbon neutral within the next five years. After announcing the plan, Erden said it was a declaration based on science and that the plan must be put in place as quick as possible. 
Thank you, Erden. Hopefully many governments around the world will follow in New Zealand's great footsteps, because it is also, with no doubt, saving the government a lot of money switching to electric cars, as we have seen numerous police departments all around the world saving huge amount of money on maintenance and getting their cars to be even more on the road. So this will no doubt be a very good example for other countries to follow when the number starts coming in. It will look good for you to switch to a greener transportation and it will save you money. A win-win-win. And let's squeeze the last news topics into this show. Yes, it's time for the Tesla Shorts. Giant new offshore wind turbine park being made in Massachusetts. The windmills are so big and can produce so much power that one could cover a whole household's daily electricity needs in just 7 seconds. Wow! The Boeing company continues to make the Las Vegas loop bigger, with new approval going to the Wayne Resort, the second resort to get approval after the Resort World. So now there are two stops approved after the Convention Center loop. Yes, dear critics, this is going to be a real thing really soon. Oakland and Seattle banned natural gas as cities continue to lead the electrification. 17 short months ago, natural gas ban didn't exist. Today, over 40 cities in California have banned this fossil fuel and committed to an all-electric future. Nice. A former Tesla employee and self-styled whistleblower has agreed to pay the electric automaker $400,000 to settle the company's lawsuit over claim that the former worker disclosures of confidential information that caused its stock price to decline by $167 million. Yeah, don't steal from Tesla. And the Simmontruck was spotted again, and just take a look at the acceleration and the sound when it takes off. That is not an ordinary truck. That's the future. And LG Kim plans to apparently more than double its battery cell production in order to support the demand for one of its new customers, Tesla. And Herbert Dees, the head of Volkswagen Group, has released a blog post discussing his effort to reform the giant automaker, including revealing Mission T. He's planned to catch up with Tesla. And Waymo is building an entire fake city to improve its driverless cars. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's kind of a new approach for full self-driving. A first of its kind testing environment that will model a dense urban environment. Yes, they will be ready for the real world soon. <laughs> Elon Musk is also named Fortune's Business Person of the Year. Yes, no surprise there, he could be named that pretty much every year. And if anyone is counting, Elon Musk is now worth $144 billion. $43 billion short of Jeff Bezos. Jeff who? But who's counting? And before we end off with a bit of fun, I just want to make a quick shout out to my news patrons and members of this channel. Kelly Long Cisco, Jason Wildegreen, L. Walker, Jan Morawski, and my two new thank you for watching members, Thomas Ragnar and Henry von der Schleus. Thank you so much for your support, guys. And let's end off with a bit of fun. <laughs> And if you want more fun, remember, I come out with new episode every single day in my Christmas calendar, Funny Moment with Elon Musk. So you can have some fun every single day until Christmas. I'm telling you, this is, this is going to get better and better. As it is. And the winner of my little Christmas calendar competition of who is making the funniest comments to the videos of Funny Moment with Elon Musk. And this week's winner is Sanis Karelis with this comment. Knock, knock. Who's there? Jeff Bezos? Jeff who? Jeff who? <laughs> Sanis, I love that comment. And you have won a Best in Tesla t-shirt of your choice. I will contact you for more details. 
and thanks to everyone who made a funny comment. There were so many good ones and I'm really enjoying them. And that is all we have time for in this news episode. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. It really helps out this video a lot. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. If you are already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. If you want to support the channel even more, remember you can for as little as $1 become a patron of the show and get your shout out here on this channel. You can also become a member of Best in Tesla YouTube channel and get shout outs and some extra perks. Hit the members button to find out more. But going forward, I will make more videos available for patrons and members only, so don't miss out. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter. I tweet all the news and more in there as it comes out. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice.